What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well with the ASMR sip. as I bump the pop filter. Today I'm gonna to be going into one of the most common mistakes I see as far as side effects that happen with steroids and that is the impact on joints and tendons and basically what you need to take into consideration if you're going to go down the enhanced route. So if you guys haven't been following the fitness industry, which I'm sure you have and Dante's begged me not to take kombucha, because you just edit out all my fucking burps from trying to digest my meal here. But basically, you know, if you follow the fitness industry, you've seen all these freak accidents of pec tears, bicep tears, and just odd tendon and joint injuries from enhanced athletes, right? So I want to touch base on that, right? The biggest mistake I see and what I try and warn people is especially when you go into a blast when you go into a blast normally what is the gym bro mentality is to like you know put the numbers up put new weight up you know break prs boom 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 you know rapid progress rapid progress rapid progress right that's the whole point of the cycle what you don't understand is that you know your joints and tendons were taking a certain amount of load now that your muscles are you know, three to four times stronger, you are putting way more pressure on your joints and tendons, way more load than they were ever exposed to. And that's where we run into these joint and tendon issues is because you don't give your, you know, you don't give time for your joints and tendons to catch up because your muscles are growing so fast. They're getting bigger, which is making your tendons more rigid right off the start, right? So there's a definite correlation between you know, going into a bodybuilding blast, your muscles blowing up, getting bigger and stronger, and your tendons getting more rigid, requiring warming up, requiring not jumping into your bench max, like feeling out your tendons. You can't have this gym bro mentality of like, oh, I'm on a blast, it's time to throw like more plates, more dates, like, you know, the fucking term, right? You know, just start stacking on plates. Basically, you're going to be asking for joint and tendon issues. And this really happens a lot in powerlifting is like, I'll like, I could do a cycle that could make me probably just as strong as Dante. But Dante has been exposed with his central nervous system to those weights and has built his tendon strength up at those weights for years, right? If I enhance my muscles to catch up to him in the strength field and then rapidly get there with the PEDs, right? I'm compromising my joints and tendons because they are not conditioned to deal with those weights at all. So what I normally tell people is like, if you go on a blast and with YK11, you know, the injectable YK11 cycle is where like, you know, I highlighted it because I lifted lighter as that cycle went on. I knew that the YK11 was going to deteriorate my joints and tendons as the cycle continued. And I left my ego at the door. I was freakishly strong on injectable YK11, freakishly strong. I could have lifted a lot more in those vlogs, looked a lot stronger, but I decided I didn't want to snap my shit up and that I trained lighter as that cycle went on and as I felt that my joints were deteriorating more and more and more. So you got to keep that in consideration. Sometimes it's better to just get the working volume in, get the extra working volume, the better recovery, the better protein synthesis, and slowly build your way up. Jumping in these rapid jumps of like going from benching 315 to 405 on one blast rate, your joints and tendons aren't used to that. The next thing I wanted to get into, and I'll have Dante throw it up because I mentioned this in my Gyno Kamastia video, is that other people abuse AIs to stop Gyno, right? I have Gyno Kamastia right now. I'm gonna be getting my surgery and documenting that, so please subscribe for that. But they want to never get gyno. That's the worst thing. And they will abuse AIs for long periods of time. And when you are crashing your estrogen, that is deteriorating your joints and tendons. When you're crashing your estrogen to prevent gyno, which is already deteriorating your joints and tendons, plus adding in super physiological amounts of anabolic steroids, SARMs, 
any synthetic androgen, you're making your tendons more rigid and you're making your muscles rapidly bigger and stronger while destroying your tendons and joints already with the AI, right? That's double damage. And that's normally where you see those freak accidents. And you saw that freak accident with Joe Aesthetics when he tore his bicep, basically doing nothing. That was abusing AIs for an extremely long period of time. So you need to keep all these into consideration. The last thing I would say that you need to keep into consideration is that when you go enhanced, your body becomes a machine and it processes micronutrients at a rapid pace. So when you go on steroids, collagen synthesis is rapidly amplified. And I'll have Dante throw up a study right now. So your body wants to go through micronutrients to make new collagen. And honestly, you should probably take collagen peptides. I get on a habit of taking collagen peptides and then I honestly stop just because they taste like shit and I hate drinking them. But if you do want to have the most optimum nutrient intake, right, you would want to take in collagen vitamin k magnesium vitamin d3 all that needs to be supplemented religiously right religiously right you have to keep on top of micronutrient intake if you're already putting your body through the ringer of blasting steroids right everything must be perfect in a perfect world to mitigate all these side effects so right off the bat to summarize this video right don't get too strong too quick and never works out good you know this rapid progress normally bites you in the ass and you bite a little bit more than you can chew and you end up ripping your pec off your bone you end up tearing your bicep and the next thing is you can't crush estrogen all the time that's going to deteriorate your tendons anything in the myostatin pathway is going to deteriorate your tendons you have to keep a constant micronutrient intake sure macros are important but micronutrients at the enhanced level are critical because your body goes through them at a much more rapid pace and if you're already spending all this money putting together these elaborate cycles and hopefully putting them together an elaborate diet and hopefully putting together an elaborate like support supplement setup why are you not taking in micronutrients that your body is craving because everything is amplified from the enhancement right this is why i'm constantly taking in potassium way more than a natural person because if I don't have a crazy high potassium intake, my muscles start cramping in the gym, and I've noticed that I can completely stop cramping if I keep on top of that micronutrient intake. So keep that into consideration. I see a lot of enhanced powerlifters. They will completely rely on the PEDs for their strength, right? Dante has some of his strongman people in his gym, like they don't train until it's time to like prep for like a strongman competition they go in pop anadrol obviously their muscles are going to get super fucking strong but nothing else is fucking conditioned and they are deteriorating their joints and tendons rapidly so keep that into consideration i hope you guys took something from this video i will see you guys in my next one Thank you.